want my audience to know Dr. Marina Del Rio. She's a clinical associate professor at the University of Iowa and an emergency medicine physician. So take note of this information. Dr. Uh, Del Rio, let's get started because I want to ask you, why is there a greater hesitancy to perform CPR on women, especially Hispanic women and African-American women? I never heard this, Dr. Del Rio. Not that I know everything, but I never heard any. Things so discriminatory as this. Tell me about this. Well, so let's start with just women in general. Women in general receive bystander CPR in public less than men, 39% versus 45%. Um, some of the barriers are thought that um, it could be more related to just the, those gender differences. Um, so there may be a fear of being accused of sexual assault. Um, but with Black and Hispanic women in particular, um, there's a number of other barriers that are related to structural racism and uh, unequal access to education and health resources. So our communities may have uh, less training in bystander CPR. Um, there is a lot of evidence that there are less people knowledgeable on how to perform uh, hands-only CPR, bystander CPR in Black and Hispanic communities. There's less knowledge of use of automated dis external defibrillators. And so um, with that, obviously, if you're not aware of how to do it, you may be more hesitant to perform it um, because you fear that you're, you may do it wrong or it might end up harming someone. Um, but there's also uh, fears that are related more to um, hesitancy with uh, interaction with authorities, with, uh, with uh, dealing with the uh, 911 system for fear that um, in the case of Hispanics, a, a lot of people in our community might be undocumented and fear what, that, what the repercussions of calling 911 may mean. Um, will I get deported because I might be accused of having harmed someone? Um, in Black and Hispanic communities, there's a, a poor relationship with authorities uh, because of a history of abuse um, and uh, assault by uh, authorities, by police, for example. So people may fear um, acting because of a fear of injury to themselves. Um, and so uh, addressing these barriers are important. And it's, it's a bigger issue than just learning how to do hands-only CPR, but at least we can start with that, with training our communities on how to perform this life-saving procedure um, that could um, double to triple people's chances to survive after a cardiac arrest. Dr. Del Rio, I know you're a member of the American Heart Association, so give me ways that we can increase, um, we can come over this barrier and increase the training and the knowledge of bystander CPR. Well, so the American Heart Association just launched the uh, Hero Saving Hearts campaign. It's just started now in August, and it's scheduled to uh, go through um, Hispanic Heritage Month, so into mid-October, um, with precisely the goal of trying to increase awareness of how to perform uh, bystander CPR in our communities. Um, so if you uh, if you go to our website, uh, heart.org slash um, Hero Saving Hearts, uh, I'm sorry, CPR Heroes. <laughs> so heart.org CPR Heroes. You can find uh, demonstration videos on how to perform CPR. Um, it's important to stress that we have simplified how to do CPR. Really, you just need to do one thing and it's use your hands and learn that it's compression rates of 100 to 120 beats per minute. That's it. So um, in order to save a life, you call 911, you start CPR, and if you want to learn more, you can go to our website to learn about other resources that we have um, to, to learn more about cardiac arrest, CPR, and other um, resuscitation methods. So we should all know CPR. I'm a big believer of that. We should also be prepared for an emergency event, and we right. should not be afraid to help someone save their life. Is that correct? That is correct. There is, is, as they say, better a cracked rib than a kick in the bucket. <laughs> so um, there is really, once a person is dead, um, which is really what cardiac arrest is, it's, it's your heart has stopped. There's really not much more damage that you can do. You can only help by doing chest compressions and at least getting that blood flowing until uh, 911 emergency care providers can arrive. Before I let you go, where do they go so that they can be more informed? Because this is just a, 
a terrible thing to to be able to say to, to my audience that women, Latinos, Hispanic Latinos, and African American women are the, the least likely to get out of hospital cardiac arrest assistance. It's just so terrible, Dr. Del Rio. So where do we go to become more prepared, more educated? So again, I would uh, I would um, encourage everyone to go to our Hero Saving Hearts campaign webpage. It is heart.org slash CPR heroes. So CPR, all capital letters, heroes, lowercase letters. And um, and you can start with that. You can watch some videos, learn how to do, uh, do the basics of hands-only CPR. And, um, and then if you're really in, uh, excited about this, you can also find resources in the community. So the fire department, um, a lot of libraries, hospitals provide free classes, but at the very least, you can start with that website, heart.org um, slash CPR heroes. Well, Dr. Del Rio, you're a hero for talking about this and bringing this to our attention. I really thank you for stopping by the Valder BB show. You've changed my life. Thank you. Oh, thanks for saying that. And um, thank you for the invitation. Publications. I interviewed the world's most fascinating authors, all because I love a good book. This summer, I partnered with WPS for BB Summer Book Giveaway. We're giving away New York Times bestsellers and award-winning books, books that inspire me and I'm sure they'll inspire you. To be eligible to win a copy of Jesus Can Give You a New Life, answer this question. What is God's greatest gift to mankind? You'll find the answer in John 3.16 of the Bible. Send your response to the email at the bottom of the screen. I'm Valder Beebe, and I'll see you for the next Beebe Summer Book Giveaway.